lounging, son. All right, welcome back to the Comic Lounge. My name's Ryan, and today I'm going to be talking about another favorite book of mine that came out this week. I'm talking Savage Dragon 268 by the great Eric Larson. But before I get into it, I just want to thank everybody that has already subscribed to the channel. We appreciate all your support, and if you are not subscribed to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. Check out some of the dope content on the channel. we got a bunch of great playlists for you to check out, a bunch of interviews, uh, other comic book reviews, whether it's indie stuff, big name creators, all that good stuff. So hit the subscribe button. And now let's get into Savage Dragon 268, which came out very quickly after 267. And you that's not always the case. Sometimes we have a large gap of issues, but I'm so stoked. And I was so happy to find out that there was a new issue dropping this week. So just wanted to quickly go through it. What's been happening lately, you know, Malcolm and his family have moved back to the U.S. They were living in Canada for, for quite some time. They're back in San Francisco. They're just walking down the street and, you know, they're having this funny conversation about, you know, toothpaste and how, you know, stores are locking up toothpaste. Who the fuck is stealing toothpaste? And I can't even tell you how many times I've had this conversation. Like, everything gets locked up now. And Malcolm makes this comment about candy bars. I need to alert somebody when I just want to buy a candy bar. And she says, you know, it's like, what kind of dystopian hellscape did we just stumble into? And it's funny because, like, it really is so dumb how many things need to get locked up now because everybody's stealing shit. And then this kind of riffs off of people just breaking into malls and breaking into stores. Except, you know, Eric Larson's going to put his own spin on it. He's like, what are you even doing? The door's right there. I thought that was pretty funny. And, um, you know, immediately they're like, oh, shit. Eric Larson is like one of the kings of double page spreads. I love how he does that, you know, almost every issue, basically. You know, he's like telling them, you, you know, you guys are outgunned, right? Why? You ever thought of surrendering? All the cool kids are doing it. And so Malcolm makes easy work of it. And then we flip to basically how we... You know, this was the cliffhanger of the big wedding issue because Frank Darling Jr. has been transported into Mr. Glum. And then he's with the younger version of Angel, the you know, his fiance. And so he's trapped in Dimension, Ma Dimension X. Mr. Glum's on his earth making sweet love to his wife. And she's like, and he's like, you don't even know me. How could you just, he was like, how could you just sit back and let him do this? And she's like, yeah, I know all about you and you love me. He's like, I don't even know you. I know the older one. And she's like, I'll get older. I'm already six and a half. So it's just funny that like she thinks it's okay. And so he's basically asking her to help, you know, use the the machine to put him back. And he's a little, you know, young angels. Like, you know, he already thought of that. And so he destroyed it. So you just see him, Frank Darling Jr. wanting to get vengeance. And then we flip to... Um, a page where you should already expect this kind of stuff in in Savage Dragon, but you know, Mister Glum in Frank's body is like you know, like you said, he's making love to you know the older angel, and she's just like, obviously they've had quite a go at it, and she's like, what have you done with my husband? So he like at first gets worried because she's like, oh shit, do you, do you know? Is she's like, oh Malcolm must have gave you a pep talk. You've really outdone yourself. And so she's like, okay, two more weeks and I'm off to join Malcolm in San Francisco while you wrap things up at home. So she's about to move back to San Francisco as well. Or she's about to move back to the U.S. and go to San Francisco with her brother, with Malcolm and Maxine and the family. So now we flash back to, you know, Malcolm, Maxine, they're talking to the cop and these kids are on super juice and it gives them temporary superpowers. These guys are just out there stealing shit. You know, even a, like a schoolgirl found a stash of it on a city bus and it's wreaking havoc on the body, but nobody's, you know, they just want the rush. And you know, he's like, great, one more thing to worry about. And then we see these girls. <laughs> he's like, I love how they always have cute nick or they always have nicknames for each other. He's like, check it out, pumpkin spice. It looks like those girls are cosplaying as you. And then she's like, it's been years since I dressed up like that. But if that's what it takes, I'm willing to put, put out my old uniform, especially if it keeps you out of the schoolyard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good with your standard issue trashy apparel. <laughs> and then, you know, the cop leaves. And we, we go to the train. And we see that Amy's tiger friend is on there making his way to San Francisco. And then it, we flash into this young kid who's being bullied. And we get nine panels of her just being picked on kick. A dead rat in her back. 
uh, backpack, a kick me sign, gum in her hair, and that will play out later. But we see um, as they're walking, Malcolm's you know trying to get Soul Maxine yet again because she's getting pissed off. He's like, it's just a viral meme, and it's basically you know they're talking about these people that think there should be thirteen months in a calendar year and why it wouldn't work. So super funny conversation here. She's like, pretty soon as anti-vaxxers calling the shots of flat earthers, moon landing deniers, we've got to nip this thing in the butt. So I love when Eric does this and kind of has like a commentary on what's going on in the world through the lens of the characters because it's super funny and it's super spot on. But this is the funniest part. We see them walking down the street and we see Mickey Mouse. <laughs> He's like, oh, so it's Savage Dragon? He's like, close enough, that was my dad, I'm his son. And he's like, oh, even better, you're the guy that stopped Osama Bin Laden when he became a giant radiated rage monster. And so he introduces Maxine to him, and she's like, oh, I'm such a big fan, Steamboat Willie changed my life. And he's like, I'm a big fan of your viral video, the way you <laughs> the way you flicked your bean and sprayed the crowd in front of those strippers was a masterclass in self-abuse. And so he was turned on by it, and he basically trying to invite them into a orgy and he's like let me give you my number in case you're ever in the mood to experiment and she's just like my childhood has just been destroyed another double page like i said we were gonna see that girl that was being bullied well she's found that super juice and she shatters this kid's head exploding eyeball ear tooth and so Malcolm comes upon the school. We see that, you know, she's on a revenge-filled killing spree. And he tries to go talk her down. You know, like, hey, like, you don't know what it's doing to your body. It's over. You're not going to hurt anymore because she's, you know, upset. Like, they, they push her. They hurt her. They call her names. They're fucking bitches. Every one of them, she says. Then we get a knockdown fight between this little schoolgirl and Savage Dragon, which is super funny. And the cops, useless. They don't know what to do, so they're just standing around. At the end of it all, she ends up having a heart attack because of the the super juice that is wreaking was wreaking havoc on her body. And the cops are like, yeah, maybe they they weren't the sweetest little girls. They did bully her, but they didn't deserve this. Malcolm walks up to his kids. It's funny how uh, Maxine's trying to explain to them that they met Mickey Mouse, and he's like, he's a cartoon. He's not even real. And so he tells them what happened with this little girl, the heart attack, and. Or raising four kids who might as well be going to school with classmates made of tissue paper. And he's basically saying that these kids are too sensitive? I mean, that's what I took from it. What happens if they get called names and they push back? We're playing with fire here. Maxine's like, they're good kids. Let's just hope they stay that way. Now, who wants ice cream? Fun little ending. I, I love this book so much. I can't say enough good things about it. These letters pages... That, you know, have been a part of this book from the beginning. I always love them. They're always good feedback from the fans. Eric's always super responsive with that. We get a cool little backup story by Rich Woodall and Mark Welsler. And we always get these cool backup stories too that, you know, are within the Savage Dragon universe. But always kind of focusing on other characters for the most part. And then this. We get this uh, pin up in the back by Don Simpson. It's a 90s grunge match now. Savage Dragon versus Megaton Man. Funny thing is, is this is a piece that I commissioned from Don Simpson. So, really cool to see it on the back cover. And just for, you know, full awareness, this is the piece. So, pretty cool to see that it was, you know, made, you know, I know Don Simpson's, I know Don's made some uh, prints of it. So it's really cool to actually see it in print on the back cover of one of my favorite books of all time, Savage Dragon. I can't say enough good things about this title. If you haven't been reading it, if you were a reader and you're a lapsed reader, always, there's never a bad time to jump back into Savage Dragon. So hit up your local comic shop, pick up the new issue. Go buy those Ultimate Collections that are coming out too. I got a whole Savage Dragon playlist. Check that out as well. And make sure you like, follow, and subscribe. And hit that bell icon so you're notified every time a new vid drops. And on that note, I'm out.